with Lyle Stevens of Maverick. Uh, Lyle, introduce yourself and the company. Sure. So uh, at Maverick, we provide Premier Brands with the most effective platform for driving sales on social media. And um, so my background originally was in social data. Uh, I helped deploy a couple enterprise social networks um, in the DoD space and realized that I was more passionate about helping large consumer brands leverage their social data around their customer base. And so that's where we came with, uh, with Maverick. So social media, this is Facebook likes, these are retweets, this is all that type of stuff. Yeah, so we help brands identify who on those social networks are the most influential, but are also their customers. So take your existing customer base, say your Oreo, you have 30 million Facebook fans. Um, Oreo probably doesn't know who their 1 million most influential Facebook fans are. We help them discover that, and then once we identify who they are, Oreo can then activate those individuals to create branded content, um, which performs much better than a Facebook ad would. So this sounds a little bit like um, um, clout, or you know maybe like a crowd tab. Sure. Uh, explain how you fit in and what the differences are here. Yeah. So clout was notorious for trying to become the standard for influence, um, and their view of influence was very traditional. In that and, and clout just gives the people a score, a Correct. number, yep. depending on how much influence they perceive you to have. Yeah. Exactly. Um, but their view of influence was very traditional in the sense that they optimized around the reach an individual had. So if you had tens of thousands of Twitter followers or even millions of Twitter followers if you were like Barack Obama, you would have really high Twitter scores because you had a large reach. Um, our view um, is almost the exact opposite. We look at the percent of your reach that you engage around a relevant topic or keyword. So for example, if you were talking on Facebook about 5Ks, marathons, and CrossFit, and New Balance and Reebok were going to launch a new shoe, they would want you sharing a photo of that new shoe as opposed to buying an ad because it would perform a much much better. In fact, we've been able to prove that this approach works where you, when you activate one of these everyday influencers as we refer to them as, they get about three of their friends to convert on a sale on average. So Whoa. it's really powerful. Um, so that's, that's what we've been able to, to prove and show over the last year. Wow. How can you, and, and you can track this by doing discount coupons, or how can you uh, show that this is working? Yeah, so what happens is when we activate an influencer to create a piece of content, um, the post that they generate has a unique link, and that link is tied to either a conversion pixel or a promo code on the back end of um, the sponsoring brand's website. So we can either do printable codes, digital coupon codes, or a pixel that goes on the shopping cart. So you must have some case studies. Uh, any you want to talk about? Any successes? Yeah, yeah. so we actually, um, we worked with a really large retailer um, in Q1 earlier this year. Um, their legal team's a little difficult. That's all right, they can stay anonymous. That's yeah, right. so it's one of the top three UT, uh, US retailers. Mm -hmm. And we activated a thousand influences for them back in Q1 around shopping and cooking. So these are individuals that were driving engagement around shopping and cooking related topics. And so these are like the best of the best of people that really can help spread the message. Well, yes, but they're, they're micro-influencers. They're everyday people. They have like a thousand to two thousand friends on Facebook. They wouldn't even know that they're influencers. But when they post about a new recipe or they post about um, a new uh, way to cook an omelet or something like that, a large percentage of their friend base engages with that content. So they are very influential, they just don't know it. Mm -hmm. So we activated a thousand people like this um, to share a new product that this retailer was putting out. And of those thousand people, um, they got over 15,000 of their friends to go to a landing page and enter their email in exchange for an exclusive coupon offer. And of those over 15,000 friends, um, over 3,000 of them went and made a purchase within 30 days wow. for a return on investment over 300%. So it was the best performing campaign for this retailer in Q1, and we've worked with them several times since now, and now we're getting ready to do an annual contract for 2015. So it's one thing to get an influencer to talk about something they really love. Yep. How do you uh, make it, uh, how do you get them excited or make it worthwhile to attract them to get them to Share. be promoting? Yeah, um, so it's all about um, aligning incentives between the brand and the influencer. So. For most of these individuals, a branded incentive, basically being treated like a brand VIP, is what does the trick. So if you're really passionate about your favorite car, and that car brand gives you the first chance to test drive the new release or the new model, you're very likely to share your experience. And so we take that approach. It's basically treating these individuals like brand VIPs, and they get exclusive content, offers, and experiences, and that's 
we'll get some to share. And so this is, uh, this could be broadly based. You can have people in, you know, who are into music. You can yep. have people into wh wherever commerce goes. Correct. Yeah. So we actually built a platform that can be deployed for any, any type of brand. Um, so a brand can deploy their own VIP influencer community around any topic they choose. And we're the, the technology behind the scenes that finds those influencers and actually. Them. So, so you mentioned cloud. How about CrowdTap? So CrowdTap's built this platform where they bring influencers to them. But from our perspective, a brand's customer is too important to let them live on another platform. So that's why we are uh, enabling brands to deploy their own VIP influencer community using our technology. So they own the experience and build long-term relationships with their most influential customer base. Does that mean you are white labeling something that goes onto their site or they offer uh, you operate independently? How does it actually work for the company? How do, how so, do their people engage with you? So from the consumer or the influencer perspective, it's compl we're completely transparent. They don't even know we're there. We host a, a community at like brand.maverick.co mm -hmm. that the brand can then deploy either on their Facebook page as a page tab application, they can iframe it on their website, they can put it wherever they want to, but from the consumer perspective, it's gonna look and feel like that brand. So the brand can completely reskin yeah. that community to, to fit its, its brand experience. And what is there besides Facebook? I mean, still Facebook is the king. Yep. Um, and uh, that's where most of your efforts must go. What else would be up and coming? Uh, Twitter is the only other thing I can really think of. Well, actually, we're going to focus on Instagram next, okay. um, mainly because the younger demographic is, is flocking to Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, Twitter, we looked at really closely, and we could do Twitter really easily, um, but the relationship between a Twitter influencer and their followers is much different than on Facebook, um, mainly because you know on Facebook 80% of your friends. On Twitter, you're likely That's to right. know like 10% of your followers. Right. And so the conversion mechanism that happens when someone influential posts, makes a post isn't there on Twitter compared to Facebook. And Instagram must be someplace halfway in between. Correct. Um, the other part that's really important is that Twitter, when you make a tweet, it's there in real time. You need to be on Twitter to see it unless mm -hmm. you're mentioned or you're searching around that hashtag. Um, on Facebook, if I log in tonight and someone made a post this morning that is influential and my friends are engaging with that content, it's going to be at the top of my newsfeed eight hours from now. So the amount of influence an individual has on a network like Facebook where they edge rank um, their platform uh, to show the most relevant content is more powerful for our model. So you guys are a little bit like page rank for humans then? Yeah, page rank for people. Yeah, that's exactly right. Well, that's a fine looking t-shirt you got there. I'm not sure <laughs> you've got it in there. Um, but I, I, I invested in this company I knew called Splash Score. What, yeah. why, why did you change your name to Maverick? Uh, so when we originally started, we built a, a, a traditional marketplace where we were getting influencers to join an app, give us opt-in access to their their posts so we could score whether or not they're influential. And we realized over time the more effective way to do this is actually to allow the brand to deploy their own version of our technology. And Splash Core wasn't really an enterprise uh, name. So we changed it and we're basically positioning ourselves to become every digital marketer's wingman. Um, so that's, <laughs> okay, I wonder when that was coming in. Yeah. So that's and you do have that Tom Cruise haircut going there. <laughs> yeah. Tomorrow's demo day. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure you're excited. Yeah, pumped. Can't wait. How, however, you know you're uh, in that rare position, and you're almost done with your funding round. Correct. Yeah. What you're gonna do with all that money? Yeah. So once we close, which should be in a couple of weeks, um, it's all about hiring new talent. So we need to build out our sales team, our account management team, and then more of our engineering team. Mm -hmm. um, so it's recruiting top talent here in the Boston area. Um, and then going after more customers. So we're focused mainly on retail, um, e-commerce based customers, and then fashion and beauty based consumer brands as well. And then auto and travel. Those are the three segments we're going after. So biz dev sales, um, the infrastructure is pretty much, uh, you're not out there looking for 15 big data scientists as well? No, we've got a couple data scientists on the team already. We are looking for a couple uh, full stack and front end engineers because for every brand that we work with, we're actually deploying like a mini infrastructure for them, a mini community, mm -hmm. um, which could have anywhere from 100,000 to a million influencers on it. So we have to have the infrastructure to support that um, across you know upwards of 30 customers. And your ideal company uh, would be having um, 50 mega accounts, you know, like McDonald's and Sears, or would it be having 10,000? mom and pop stores uh where no it's definitely the, the former so uh 50 to 100 
large Fortune 1000 consumer focused brands is really what we're focused on. And once you land that, you'll be uh, sailing off into the seas <laughs> with your turquoise and emerald and yacht because that'll be yeah. fabulous business. Anybody we'll can see. anybody can you know offer a value proposition to clients to getting them sales. That's you know that's the holy grail. Yep. Yep. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks, Ty. Appreciate it.